All right, guys, so welcome back to another video. Uh, this series I'm going to be breaking down into several videos because there's a lot to this and a lot of moving parts. Now, what I'm about to show you inside of here is just a contextual animation. I assume that they're driving this, uh, well, they're driving it partially through the animation blueprint and some other places as well. Uh, so I'm not going to show you all how to do this specifically, maybe in a, a later example. I'll go over this with you guys, but I was just wanting to show you uh, this for context on, uh, because we're going to be doing something similar uh, to this uh, in relation to contextual animations, except it's going to be more simplified because we're just going to be setting it up for a bench. So we're actually going to be setting it up for a bench that came from here, right inside of here. Now you'll see a smart object inside of here, but the smart objects aren't actually hooked up yet. I'm assuming that maybe in the 5.4 release of this project, they'll add smart objects or they'll hook this one up. I don't know, uh, but right now they're not actually hooked up. So if we open this stuff up, you'll see there's not anything in this. This contextual animation is blank. I never uh, hooked it up. <laughs> But this one is, it's not a smart object, but it is a contextual animation. And if you eject and you right click and edit the vehicle, it'll pull it up in here. And you'll see this contextual animation under here. And this is the contextual animation for it. So feel free to come in here and this is under the very bottom one. It's the vehicles folder, maps. And this is the map I'm on right now. So I'm going to go ahead and now this animation isn't perfect. Uh, and whenever we set ours up, it won't be perfect either. In order to get it perfect, we need motion matching uh, because that's the only way to match poses between animations. Uh, like so don't expect it to be perfect. And just to show you that it's not perfect, uh, a lot of people don't realize it's not perfect. And they think that this is like somebody moving in real life perfect, and it's not. I'm going to slow it down and I'm going to start walking away. And I just wanna show this to you guys so that your expectations aren't realist, unrealistic for this video. And so they're moving the camera out of the way to try to hide this, uh, but, the feet are actually sliding. Uh, shoot, one second, let me just put this back into, yeah, so so the, you've seen what they did with the, the camera and it's very smart that they did that too because it hides, it hides the flaws. But uh, let me just do it this way. So, I mean, you can kind of see it whenever they're stepping out, but let me just, going to put it back into slow-mo mode and then I'm going to do this pause it and then I'm going to eject from it so that you can see how imperfect it is oops wrong button there and there you go so it's not flawless hyper realistic uh, animation uh, they're using motion warping and motion warping, it's almost like a linear interpolation uh, for root motion and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it moves, it adjusts more than just the root, but uh, you'll see just how imperfect it is. Root motion warping is not the end all uh, fix for making hyper realistic animations. Uh, the, only, the only way to get hyper realistic animations is to use. Uh, motion matching, which is AI based. It's based on a machine learning algorithm uh, and it uses, well, it uses a machine learning algorithm from my understanding to uh, look through and uh, pick the next best matching pose to play on the next tick of the animation uh, graph. So that's how it works from my understanding. So. Now that we've got that out of the way, I will 
go ahead and get started. Uh, well, actually, I was going to show you guys this too. So this will just be the intro video, and then we'll actually start setting it up in the next video because I actually do want to show you all this uh, so that y'all have somewhat of a realistic expectation of what we're going to get out of this. And I'm not using any like hyper advanced uh, stuff inside of here uh, to achieve what I'm doing here. And actually I am going to have to bear with me for a second. I have not finished to that one yet. And actually, I'm not sure I want just an empty chat zone. I'm probably going to have something that they go and talk around like a well or something. So I'm going to remove that. and I'm going to drop that one in here. And hopefully it just works because uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to just work. So let's go ahead and simulate. And if we give it a second, there he goes. There we go. So that's about what you can expect uh, from this. And I'll just go ahead and change it. Now, where his feet are positioned whenever he starts blending in will dictate how well the blend looks. Uh, so that's actually probably about as good as you're going to get it without using some kind of advanced foot locking system. And we might revisit this later, like maybe I'll uh, do a video on foot locking or integrating a foot locking system into this. That's not a bad idea and it might be something I do later. Now you're going to see that he's hitching right here. Uh, that is actually a bug. So um, just ignore that. I'm hoping they fix that soon. If you go watch the smart objects uh, with uh, interact gameplay interactions or whatever, uh, GDC video from back uh, a year ago, uh, the 2023 GDC, when they showcased it, if you go and look real close, his characters do the exact same thing when they're sitting on the bench looping. So it is it is a bug and it has something to do with looping animations. There's like a, a gap between there where it starts blending back into the idle pose on mine. Uh, so there is a way you can work around that. I might brush over that near the end of the video, but it's not actually a good workaround. And I would probably just suggest dealing with it until they fix it because it is a bug and I'm sure they'll fix it. So anyway, we are going to be doing this in 5.4 and there's a reason why I want to do this in 5.4. For one, in a, in a couple of months, 5.4 will be out of preview, uh, I'm hoping anyway. And uh, also because there's some things that we actually can't do in 5.3 with smart objects yet like enabling a disabled slot. You cannot yet, at least from blueprints, you can't yet enable a disabled slot. And so this is a gray slot, it's disabled, and I can't enable it from 5.3. So anyway, not from blueprints. Maybe from C++ you can, but not from blueprints. It's not, a, there's not enough things exposed yet in 5.3, so. Anyway, I don't know what button I pressed, but it just screwed stuff up. Uh, that's all right. I can just reload this. And I don't know what just happened. It crashed. Okay, well, that's fine. Probably better that way anyway. So I will see you in the next video where we will be inserting this up.